Advisors, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. We're here on day two of Salona's Cellosphere. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-pilot for this journey, Rob Strache. Rob, we're powering not just an airplane right now, but we're about to take off on a rocket ship. Are you ready for our next guest? I, I am ready. I am ready to be, you know, blown away in the next uh, next segment that we have going on here. Because this is, like, very exciting who we have, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to stretch out our intro for this one. Will, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I can imagine this is such a busy week for you. You're the chief scientist at Salonis, but you're also the godfather of the theory that brought every one of these 3,000 people to this room and is responsible for Salonis existing. How are you doing this morning? Very good. It's, uh, it's great, of course, to see so many people here gathering together. It, it was very funny because last week I was at uh, another cross mining conference, the scientific cross mining conference took place in Copenhagen. There were also many people here, and it's kind of uh, super uh, nice to see that my ideas are picked up and, and there is so much uh, support and enthusiasm for it. So, yeah. When you had the idea and, and did your research and published your paper on process mining originally years ago, did you have any idea that it would lead to this level of business adoption? Just to be very honest, I'm disappointed that not more people know about it today, because it was for me immediately clear. So, so the background was a bit that I was uh, re- I, I was very much a workflow management guy, right? So we were automating processes based on what people were modeling. And what I found out uh, is that most of the organizations that would buy uh, workflow management technology would not use it at all, right? So they would buy it and not use it because the real processes were more complicated than when people start to model. And that gave me the idea uh, to start working on process mining, where you start from the data and you try to find out what is really happening. Because if people say what they are doing, they are very unreliable. You need to actually look at the data to see what, uh, what, what, what it is. And I, uh, it was immediately clear that this is super important. Like any organization has processes, any organization has data, data is only growing, a lot of organizations have process related problems, so it's like one plus one is two, right, it's as simple as that, and still I'm amazed uh, that not any organization is doing it, right? so, so it's clearly picking up, but to be very honest, to answer your question, I'm disappointed that not more people are here. Yeah. I, love, I love the energy. Uh, yes. uh, I, I think, again, when you look at it, I mean, it's been, what, uh, no, not even 10 years. Right. So uh, I started on this in the late 90s. Late 90s. Right? So okay. It was so in the late 90s that, as in the 90s, I was focusing very much on automation and workflow management systems. And then I thought this doesn't work. And from a research point of view, I said, okay, let's do it differently. And then there was this period uh, of, let's say, 10 years where it more or less only existed in research. And uh, there were a few smaller startups uh, also from my students. But, but, but only in the last couple of years it has, it has been taking off. Yeah. What, why do you think it has taken off in the last few years? Because it is in, inevitable, right? And as I said, I, I think many more companies should know about it and apply it. Uh, but uh, it's completely logical, right? There is no organization um, that doesn't have process-related problems. And it's often very unclear why these problems are there. At the same time, there is data, and people do not know how to use it. I think with the uptake of AI, organizations become interested in, okay, we should do something with our data. But I think, to be very honest, I think organizations are still pretty naive that they think that they can ask, I don't know, chat GPT what, what their problem is. Uh, you really need to do the work. And process mining is like the enabler for being able to apply these types of techniques. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we've been talking about it for quite a while, even not while we were here, but before we got yeah. here, that really, if you don't understand, you can't harmonize the data, you can't then look across the data and understand the processes, building an agent to go do something for somebody doesn't make a lot of sense. No. As a source, also, if you uh, look at a system like SAP, right? Yeah. So, so a typical SAP installation, has hundreds of thousands of tables filled with information. So how can you get started? And if you do process mining, you first, uh, let's say, discover the processes, 
you can see where your problems are, and then for every individual problem, you can kind of uh, uh, analyze it further and generate these AI and their data mining problems without being able to see, I have a bottleneck here, uh, I, people are deviating in this part of the process. If you don't know that, you cannot uh, apply agents or whatever in any meaningful way. Right? So, absolutely. And, and so since the late 90s compared to now, obviously there was data then, but we have exponentially more data in every part of an organization and, and our lives, quite frankly, at this stage. Is the science similar now as to what you originally started working on, or what's the evolution been there? I, I think it's very like where, where my thinking, let's say, changed. Uh, when we started doing this, we were thinking of process mining as a tool for an expert, right? A data scientist would go into a company, would analyze the problems and generate a report. I think what has changed, and I think uh, Stallone has played a very important role in that since their uh, existence, is that uh, it is not a tool for a data scientist. If you look at the successful applications of Stallone's, this is an organization where thousands of people are using it, not to generate a report, but to look at it every day. It's like, like the, uh, the, 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 the cockpit that the pilot has, and he doesn't need a report, he needs to see in real time what is going on, and everybody needs to see that, and I think that that's an important change. Yeah. So we, we actually heard that from BMW, yeah. who went from two to 1,600 licenses yeah. and seats, yeah. and I, I think, which is exactly how they're using it. Where, with the science of working from the data up, there's also the human aspect of that as well. How, how did your research influence that you, you have to bring people along and they have to want that visibility. Yeah. So, so I think if you uh, look at the adoption and the success of process mining, I think the technology works. And of course the technology is improving every year. I think the technology is not a bottleneck. I think there are two bottlenecks. One bottleneck is uh, the fact that in many organizations that talk about these things, they do not have their data under control. Still many things are on paper or, or they cannot find it. And it's the organizational aspect, right? So, so these are the things that are, uh, let's say, very important. So you need to, to address these problems. And uh, I think you need to educate people to, to be able to, uh, to, to do that. And no organization should think we buy software and now everything is solved. Right? Uh, oh, I thought that's how it works. It doesn't work like that. You really need to do the work. Uh, so I think process mining is a very concrete technology that allows you to do that. Another thing that I observed is that if you do process mining bottom up, right, where uh, I don't know, an individual is super excited about process mining, that typically doesn't work because the person is excited, finds all kinds of problems, but maybe his boss doesn't like uh, that these problems yeah. are exposed. Right? So many people do not like transparency. So uh, I think the approach of Stallone is to really get buy-in from higher management because you really need that to, to address the problems that are there. Right? And, and to benefit the holistic health yeah. of the organization. One of the things that's really struck me about being in this room and talking to so many different customers is, is the breadth of impact that Stellonis has and that process mining has. What are some of the applications or use cases or stories for you over the last 25 years that have really stuck out and, and, and felt good to you as a, as a person, not yeah. just as a scientist? Uh, so, so, so uh, process mining is a very generic te te technology. You can apply it to anything. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes I say, uh, so everybody knows Excel, uh, how a spreadsheet works. You should think of process mining as a spreadsheet, not for numbers, but for events, right? You can mm -hmm. apply it to, to any domain. Uh, so, so if you, for example, look at my, my first real-life application that, that we applied like pro pro probably li 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 like 24 years ago, was in the Dutch agency that was handing out uh, traffic violations, where we were analyzing, okay, uh, if people are speeding or parking wrong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, do they actually pay? Are they raising objections, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And for example, there we could, for example, clearly see differences between uh, the country of the driver, right? Uh, so, so Italians 
go through the process differently than, than I know Germans or something like that. That, that was like like uh, like perhaps a use case that you don't think of. I think most of the companies start with applying process mining in the financial domain, procurement, sales, and, uh, and they, 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 these types of things. That has the advantage that in these areas there's lots of experience and you can quickly uh, uh, get started. For me, the most exciting things are where you actually go to the core processes. Uh, so you mentioned BMW. I love it when it is applied to production because yeah. BMW is not a company that uh, they, they build cars, so that's yeah. the core process. To, to, to mention one more example that, I'm, that I find very interesting is how Lufthansa is using uh, process mining. So, so they are using it for a variety of processes. And the most interesting one is that they are analyzing delays at airports. Everyone's favorite thing. So, so and, and, and you can see it's a real problem that, yeah. that you need, need to address. So you have to realize that, uh, like on European flights, in many cases a plane lands and needs to take off again in one hour. And in this hour, an amazing number of things have to happen, right? Perhaps the plane needs to be refueled. The people uh, need, need to get uh, on board, need to the baggage, etc. Uh, also, like there is staff that is first at the check-in desk that is then later at the gate. So in this one hour, lots of things are happening. And uh, I, I think that's a super interesting use case for process mining to understand, okay, what is now the cause of delay? But you also have to realize that if a plane gets delayed in Frankfurt by half an hour, it is creating a mess in Madrid or London or wh wherever it is going. Domino effect uh, there uh, is huge. Okay. Yeah. And there's yeah. even a, a regulatory aspect to it, too, because the EU has some significant fines for if you're delayed over no. a certain number of hours. Do you see that uh, things like regulation, be it on the corporate side or be it on the sustainability side, really helping to drive people's interest in process mining? So I think on the sustainability side, we see it a bit. That's not yet there. I think in other domains, uh, it should be done much more. And so, for example, if you look at the job of an, of an auditor, you, you need to check whether a, whether a company is reporting certain numbers, whether these numbers are accurate. And it feels so weird that there is all of this information available and an auditor is not using it. So I think that's an area where regulations could help uh, to do that much better. Another typical example would be healthcare. I think uh, uh, process mining in healthcare, specifically in Europe, is very complicated uh, because many of the uh, doctors and departments are very autonomous, data quality problems, etc., etc. In these areas, I'm convinced that if there would be government regulations, uh, the adoption of cross money would skyrocket in, the, in these areas. So, yeah. I think it's an interesting culture. I'm just thinking about flight delays and everything else. As, as consumers on the outside of this world, you can see which companies aren't investing in process mining by their inefficiencies or by the delays or by a lot of the, the different things that can happen there, which I think is actually quite fascinating. How do you see process mining evolving in the future? What's yeah. going to happen next? Yes, so, 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 so first of all, what you just mentioned. So we typically do not realize that there is a process until it goes wrong. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. We do not see processes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. until you cannot get a credit card or, or yeah. the, 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 the some issues. Right? So process mining, we take that for granted. Uh, as a process, we take that for granted until they don't work. And so I think if you look at the future, I think it's like a gradual development, right? I, I don't see that there will be a spectacular sudden change. I think it's a no-brainer that it will, uh, let's say, grow over time, right? That, that, that's for sure. If you look on the research side, you can see that uh, that most of the innovations are now in the area of object-centric process mining and enabling an AI and, and, and machine learning. So I think that's the move that we are going through now. But it is not, on the one hand, it's very exciting that all of these things are happening, but it's not a fundamentally different question, right? Because in the end, uh, when you talk about processes, there are just two things important, that is performance and compliance, right? And, and these problems uh, exist today, they existed 20 years ago, they will exist uh, 20 years in the future. 
So, so it will evolve, but it will not be dramatically different. At its core, it's going to be the same. All right, I got to ask you a question that I asked Rudy and Alex yesterday. It's a little bit outside of work, but I'm curious. Obviously, efficiency and optimization very core to your being. You're one of the most cited people in, in the world in this space. How? What? What processes in your personal life have you optimized and made more efficient? Yeah. I think people are very bad at uh, applying their own principles uh, to, 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 to their own things. Uh, so we all typically complain. Um, I, I'm not using process mining for my own process. Uh, uh, but but if you look in the like circle around it, it's of course you are encouraging people to 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 use these, these types of things. Uh, so for example, inside Salonas, we are applying lots of process mining techniques to the processes in Salonas itself, right? Uh, at my university, uh, I'm trying to push the university to, to, uh, to use more process mining because there is lots of opportunity to do it, but there's also lots of resistance uh, uh, against it. Right? Oh, I can imagine. I mean, this is how things have always been done. This is how we do it here. There, there's that, probably that resistance and tension across yeah. the board, whether it be at the university or, or whatever arena right. you're in. But, but, but it's what, what we said before, there is so much potential that we are not using. It's so obvious. Uh, so, like two, two weeks ago when I was giving a lecture in Aachen, I was asking the students, how many uh, people do you think work in the administration of the city of Aachen? Uh, so, the, the city of Aachen is like like two and a half, uh, two, two, 250,000 uh, inhabitants, small city. So, I asked the students, how many people do you think work in the city in administration? And one student raised his hand and he said, uh, I think only three, because I always have to wait and I don't get a response to the Right? So, so he said three. And I said, there are 6,000 people working in the administration of a relatively small city. That's a lot, actually. And uh, that shows kind of the potential that is out there where, uh, I don't know, there are lots of, let's say, still paper processes that are super inefficient. Uh, and so my hope is that when we talk in 20 years again, that we remove some of these inefficiencies, because also with an aging society, I rather have that people, I don't know, work in hospital or build cars, rather than that they uh, push paper around. Yeah. Yes, but, uh, the, yeah. I think we can all agree no more paperwork. If this, yeah. if this eliminates that, that would be absolutely fantastic. On every and level. you are living in the U.S., right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Come to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well stated. Yeah, I don't even, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole right now. I have one final question for you, Will. And, and I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to give you some answers you can't give me to this. Because yeah. I know, I know uh, I, I'm going to ask you, what do you hope when we interview you at next year's Cellosphere, you're able to say that you can't yet say today? But the one answer I'm not going to let you give us is that there's been greater adoption. Because I know you're impatient about that and you're excited about that. Yeah. So what else do you want to be able to say beyond that? Um, I, uh, the, the thing that I would like to say is that we have now many, let's say, uh, non-standard use cases mm -hmm. that are repeatable. Right? As I said, we are now we are very repeatable and very reliable when it comes to purchase to pay order to cash. But I think there are many processes that have a lower frequency in specific domains where we can provide much more standard support, right? Because I think one of the things that we would like to see is that if we improve something in one organization, we can bring these experiences to the next organization, et cetera, et cetera. And we are doing that now in the standard processes, but it would be, I would be happy if we would be able to say, okay, we're also doing that in healthcare, we're also doing that in production or something like that, and, and, and that would be my my hope. Yeah. I love that. Uh, bring, right. bring the optimization to the nuance, to the detail, and, and to every sector yeah. around the globe. Well, this has been an absolutely fantastic time. Thank you. That's been a joy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> love to hear that, Rob. Always a pleasure. Yes. And I hope you feel smarter like I do after this particularly scintillating segment. We're here in Munich, Germany, day two of Salona Cellosphere. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm -hmm.